Friends, just recently in a good book about architects' houses, I saw this house and I realized that you must see it too. So I got in the car, came to Poland, and we are right on the border with the Czech Republic. Now, I will show you this super conceptual house. Look at how incredible it looks. The house is situated on a mountainside. There are no neighbors around, no fences. Somewhere down there a tiny little village is nestled and this one object it monumentally hangs right above the viewers. This is a project by Robert Konieczny. He is an Italian-Polish architect. All his projects are quite conceptual. I really love traveling to different countries worldwide to film unique houses like these for you. So let's like this video and subscribe to our channel. It motivates us to film more of such architecture. A few words about the location of the house on the plot. We are currently on the entrance side. As you can see, the entrance is a ramp that can be completely raised. You can lower it like this and enter the house as if boarding a ship, so to speak. Interestingly, this is the southern side, as we can tell by the sun and the house can be completely opened from the south side. These walls are actually sliding. So, I can move this wall like this, and I open the south side of the house. The side we were on is the northern side, accordingly. And from the northern side we have a view of the mountains, which never needs to be curtained, because there is no scorching sun. This is actually very interesting. Usually large windows are placed on the south side, which coincides with a good view. This is considered an ideal plot. However, in the scorching sun, this beautiful view is always covered. Here, it is not the case, and this is a very interesting solution. Another smart solution is that it is like a vacation home, not for permanent residents, more like a holiday house. A person can leave and completely close it up. On that side, it doesn't close, but the windows are very high up, making it impossible to climb in. Therefore, this house is also super safe. A few more details about these partitions. As you can clearly see, this is metal, but this metal matches the color of the monolithic concrete. Interestingly, this metal is specially oxidized to achieve a texture similar to that of the concrete walls. And regarding the form factor of the concrete wall itself, we see a completely concrete cube. And it's a bit unclear how this is done because this is Poland, not Spain, right? It often snows here and there are sub-zero temperatures. The winter here is quite cold. Meanwhile, the house is cast from concrete. Now, I will give you a super useful tip on how to make such monolithic concrete in northern climate, and in return, you can support me with a like. So, 7 inches of solid concrete. It's the most ordinary and typical concrete. Robert Konieczny mentioned that he wanted to use a very high-quality concrete for advertising the concrete factory, but their concrete pump couldn't even reach this site. Therefore, they used the most ordinary concrete, which is produced right here. It requires 7 inches to vibrate it properly, and a plastic formwork is needed to make the concrete smooth. Perry was used here, which is considered the best formwork. The walls are further coated with a water repellent to prevent them from absorbing moisture. They were coated several times and we can see small leaks on the concrete. This is because it often rained and the concrete absorbed a little moisture in some places. The house is insulated from the inside. Outside, the concrete creates a cohesive, durable, vandal-proof and brutal facade. Nothing will happen to it, you really don't have to worry. Moreover, there is a ventilation gap between the insulation and the concrete itself. I haven't seen this solution anywhere else. In fact, Robert Konieczny invented this solution himself. And this is very appropriate, because no matter what water repellent you use on this wall, some micro-moisture can still be absorbed. And to prevent it from getting into the insulation, there is this ventilation gap. Even if we look above the window, you can see there is an opening here through which the facade is ventilated. And so this moisture escapes. I have never seen such a solution in monolithic concrete houses, but it is damn right. The insulation here is 9.8 inches. These include 3.9 inches of extruded polystyrene foam and 5.9 inches of spray polyurethane foam. All of this is then covered with a gypsum plasterboard partition and coated with micro-cement. So, 
we see a completely concrete house both outside and inside but in reality it is super warm and can even obtain any certificate of guarantee you want such an interesting wall detail you might say that the house is positioned across the slope so the entire snow cap will accumulate somewhere in this area and perhaps this is not entirely correct the architect had anticipated that as planned water was expected to flow naturally down the slope and as you can see there is a gap under the house specifically for the passage of water that descends from this slope this is how the idea came about to elevate the house so that water could freely pass under the slope instead of pooling here next there was a desire to play around with the elevation of the house and since the house is technically a barn house the architect came up with the idea to create a downward slope and this is how the form was born thus the form was born from the functions an analytical approach this is how we strive to design our projects that is based on the analysis of the site to devise functionality and then transform that functionality into an unusual sculptural composition that's how it was done here horses goats sheep and various other animals can graze around here you see even at the bottom of the house we notice these dark spots which are caused by animals rubbing against the house from below resulting in these small marks but in reality it is a way of living in harmony with the surrounding nature structurally we have monolithic walls that are load bearing inside we have two supports and one wall that's it there are no other load bearing parts of this house the roof is actually raftered I thought the roof was also cast from a monolith. Somehow a membrane is hidden under this monolith, but it turned out to be much simpler. We have a Firestone TPO membrane on top, which is just a regular membrane. The exact same membrane is in my house. It is just gray in color and matches the tone of the house. In fact, it's a really great solution to use a TPO membrane specifically on pitched roofs. The glazing of the house is in an aluminum profile, which is some kind of Swiss system. I don't know its name exactly but overall as you can really see it allows for quite a very large span glazing two parts of the house open up on the right side there are three living rooms well let's call them children's rooms they are also designed very interestingly because from here we can see the double glazing so we have this front row of glass and behind it there is something like a cold balcony which is probably what it's called in northern countries slang and then there is another additional layer of glass this is highly effective in terms of energy efficiency especially during the winter period because it is the northern side and double glazing with a thermal buffer is energy efficient it's also great in the summer because you can open one of the panels creating a terrace and each children's room has access to this terrace that is a terrace that connects three children's rooms again a unique solution that works well both in winter and summer the next room we have is the living room and here there are two large sliding glass panels that completely open up this living room towards nature and the house becomes fully open you can see right through it it even becomes ventilated if you open the front door on that side and fully open the glazing here and the next part of the house is like an open terrace almost like an outdoor terrace enclosed with double glazed windows on this facade but open from the street side at the entrance this is convenient because when guests arrive they can either go directly to the terrace or into the house in total the house has an actual warm contour of about 1076 square feet and with the terraces it is 1506 square feet it's interesting that these terraces are completely invisible they are all hidden terraces visually they seem to elongate and enlarge the house making it appear in a way more spacious functionally it serves as a terrace for integration with nature allowing to step out into the fresh air while being inside the house and here we can see a small hatch that provides easy access to this particular part under the house the house is fully ventilated as we can see gaps all moisture passes through here and it remains completely dry under the house this space can be used as a utility room for storing some household equipment in a monolithic house you can always see traces from the formwork fastenings like these holes which are usually filled in later but some of these holes were intentionally left open you can see it right here above me these are the ventilation gaps i was talking about another interesting fact here in the mountains due to strong winds the rain can be almost horizontal. 
And in order to prevent moisture from entering into these gaps, because they are specifically designed to allow moisture to escape from under the facade, very minimal tubes bent upwards are inserted into these openings. These tubes prevent moisture from getting inside the insulation. Just imagine how much the architect thought about the details. How can one even come up with the idea that rain can be horizontal rather than vertical? And how could one even come up with the idea of inserting a tube into the hole from this formwork? I am absolutely astonished by the thoughtfulness in the details of this project. In fact, what is great about houses made from a single material, these monomaterial houses, is that there are no unnecessary joints, extra moldings, ledges, fillets or metal trims that appear at the material junctions. The only drain I see is at the top where the roof is, nowhere else at all. You see even the terrace is made of concrete. There is no decking board here. There is no special upstand for this board to fit in any way. This upstand is not covered with a drip edge. It's all simple. In fact, everything genius is simple. Just a terrace made of monolithic concrete, just a wall made of monolithic concrete, and so you simply walk. In fact, everything is so simply here that there isn't even a slope in this direction to prevent puddles from forming. How did the architect actually handle this? They poured this part of the house, meaning they looked at where puddles were forming and simply drilled a hole through this terrace so that the water would go under the house and then down the slope. Genius. By walking along this ramp, we arrive at the terrace I was telling you about. It's an interesting space because it is glazed, yet at the same time open to the outside. As you can see, the floor here is also not a decking board, it is the same monolith as throughout the entire house. Interestingly, this part also moves, which means it is indeed also a wall that we can very easily close. By closing this wall, the house is divided into these kinds of boxes. Moreover, lighting is installed here, along these sliding walls where the rail is mounted, with integrated light fixtures, such a lighting strip. And by closing the house here and activating the lighting, you can also stay here, and of course, this is where the main entrance to the house is located. Let's go inside. I'll show you the interior. The first thing that catches the eye is, of course, the very direct, absolutely steep view. The house opens up in a straight line with two rows of continuous panoramic glazing. It's a bit unusual for me that we enter directly into the living room, so there's no sort of hallway, right? But I must say that to some extent I like this brutalism because here no one takes off their shoes. In fact, everyone here walks around in sneakers, moving around the house comfortably like this. This floor also looks like concrete, but in reality, it is micro-cement. As I mentioned to you, since monolith is insulated from the inside and the ceiling is also insulated, everything inside is finished with micro-cement. The ceiling, the floor and the walls are all micro-cement. Another interesting detail is that the architect envisioned the possibility of creating a vestibule here, this means you can see rail to later install some sliding glass constructions here, setting them up for winter if needed, but it's never necessary. When someone is sitting here watching a movie and another person enters the house, the cold comes into the living room and you have to say, come in, come in quickly, because it's cold. So, that's the story. However, there is an opportunity to install a glass partition forming a vestibule here. The overall space of the house is super architectural. I wouldn't say there is any special interior design here. Here, all the items are chosen so as not to distract from this incredible view. You see, even the table is glass. The chairs are glass. Just to avoid attracting unnecessary attention, one of the important features in the interior is this metal stove. It was custom made. It took about a year to make. Robert mentioned that he was told it would be done in a month. The order was completed in a year. Everything is custom made. Interestingly, there is no fireplace here. It is so minimalistic. To some extent, it even characterizes the house. So we see the house closed from the outside and we also see the stove closed from the outside. What's the deal? Here, there is a control button that you press and then you will notice how this part of it on top of your stove moves inward and turns to one side in order to allow you to load firewood into it. In its usual form, it is completely a cylinder, meaning a minimalistic shape. 
The only thing is that it all runs on a battery, which has broken down. The person who makes this stove is out of reach, so no one can fix the battery, and currently it is not functioning. This happens sometimes. About this part of the house. Here we see the kitchen area, which is framed by two such corridors on both sides. It would seem once again an unusual solution. I told you about one of them from outside because this passage leads to a shared terrace with double glazing, which each of the children's rooms has access to, and this is essentially the passage to these rooms. Interestingly, the material of the kitchen facades is wood, specifically oak panels, and they fully transitioning extend, framing the entire wall. Notice that the entire corridor wall is made of metal. This is stainless steel, a polished stainless steel that looks like a mirror, and it has a function. It's not just beautiful. It doesn't just play with the metal on the facade. The thing is, the western sun shines right through that bathroom window. We can see the bathroom directly right ahead. It is now open and it can be closed with a glass partition, but the sunlight will pass through. The sun reflects brightly off these mirrored panels made of polished metal and enters the living room. Just look at how thought out the work with insulation is, along with the placement of the house on the plot in combination with its interior. There are special mirrors here that allow natural sunlight to enter this space at specific times of the day. Let's go there. Here is a glass door that definitely lets in light, but it is matted so you can't see the person in the bathroom. By the way, there's an interesting story related to this. Here is a window that lets in the western light, and just opposite it is the shower. And Robert mentioned that when he actually takes a shower, he can be seen from there. His neighbor asked to add some kind of partition so that he wouldn't be visible. That's how this curtain appeared. And here are some rooms that do not require windows, that is, it's another bathroom. It's quite unusual, and I like this material on the wall. It's actually the spray foam insulation I talked about, polyurethane foam. So, part of the house is insulated with extrusion polystyrene foam, and part with polyurethane foam, which is right here on the wall. The architect liked this material and said, let's keep it. He specially highlighted it, resulting in this unique textured wall design. The only thing is that this material is flammable and under no circumstances should it come into direct contact with fire as it is simply unsafe. The entire wall is finished with oak panels but look at the ends. It's a wall made of glued plywood. An amount of time has passed and the architect does not remember how it was done but it seems there is a part of the wall made from glued plywood and the door is made in the same way. That is even a jam and the door leaf are glued from plywood. Beyond this wall, there are three children's rooms. The children's room is quite small, but it features a very cool architectural idea, the finishing with polished metal. It allows for an expanded view because while in the room, you can only see the mountains frontally, but thanks to the polished metal, you can also see the reflection of this slope. Thus, the view certainly becomes even more beautiful in these rooms, and visually the rooms seem to expand, and this is the terrace that can be accessed from the three children's rooms. Here you can open part of the glazing during the summer, and in the winter, it closes. There are glass barriers here to ensure safety, and children can meet each other on these terraces. And here we see the monolithic supports, which are load-bearing. That is, there are only two supports and one monolithic load-bearing wall. And accordingly, the insulation is located behind these supports in the plane of the windows. That's the story we have about this conceptual house. Now I'm closing the house, but don't close our YouTube channel. Go to the next video, enjoy other house tours, and see you next time.